God's blessings to you today. We have reached the end of January, and it is the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. The Old Testament lesson comes from Deuteronomy chapter 18, reading verses 15 to 20. The Epistle lesson from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. And the Holy Gospel for today comes from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. And for our sermon text, we're going to look at the first half of the Old Testament lesson. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18, words of Moses to the Israelites, verses 15 to 17. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. Heavenly Father, these are your words, and therefore they are the truth. We ask you to sanctify us by this truth. Amen. If they were afraid to approach Jesus, they didn't show it. They brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus did as he was asked. He led the man away from the crowd until it was just the two of them. The Lord continued to lay his hand on him. He put his fingers into the man's ears. He touched the man's tongue. Then the Son of God looked up to heaven and said one word in his language, two in ours, be opened. And the word of Christ produced the desired results. The man's ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. He spoke correctly and rightly. It was not just the deaf and mute man who spoke rightly that day. The miracle had its effect on everyone gathered there. And though Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone else about the miracle, they had too much to say in praise of him. The more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. We worship Jesus Christ as the King of Kings, and rightly so. Today, we see him as the prophet of prophets, the fulfillment of Moses' prophecy in our Old Testament lesson. Through his word, God is teaching us why he sends prophets and how we can recognize them. True prophets produce the right response. They speak of God rightly, that we may speak of God rightly. Moses was setting the house of Israel in order because he was about to die. Joshua had already been chosen to lead the people into the promised land, but who was going to speak to them on behalf of God? Despite the bumps along the way, their complaints against him, his frustration at their behavior, the people were going to miss Moses. There was going to be a gap in the life of the nation, a hole in their hearts. Moses could see temptations up ahead, temptations to fill this gap as other nations filled it. The promised land flowed with milk and honey, but it also flowed with abominable practices and false prophets. So Moses warned his children, just before our text begins, let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. The temptation has always been there to pay any price to know the future. Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Will I live to a ripe old age? Will I find a life after death? And if so, what will it be like? These are the questions that keep people up at night, and they will go to great lengths to find prophets who will tell them what they want to hear. Many of these prophets, and the way they prophesy, are considered harmless, even fun. But God doesn't see it that way. Moses said, whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. God did not redeem his people 
and bring them safely through the sea and through the wilderness so that they could turn to false prophets in the promised land. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you are about to dispossess, listen to fortune tellers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. And it's at this point that our text begins. God did not redeem his people and bring them this far only to leave them with a gap in their lives and a hole in their hearts. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. That would be the primary responsibility of God's people. For the prophet, the primary responsibility would be to represent God to the people by speaking his word to them. A true prophet doesn't tell fortunes. He doesn't predict the trajectory of the stock market or the winner of the Super Bowl. He proclaims the word of truth, which never changes with the times and never charges a fee for service. The word tells you what you were without God. It tells you what you are with him. It tells you what you are to be with him, blameless before the Lord your God. And it tells you that your future with him is certain. The word tells you all these things because it tells you what God has done for you. Though it can be terrifying, though it's not always what we want to hear, without the word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, we cannot live. To be without it is eternal death. And deep down we know this even if we don't always express it very clearly. Moses said that God would raise up a prophet for Israel just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire any more, lest I die. Did I miss something here? Because that didn't sound like a desire to hear the word of the Lord. And yet we hear, the Lord said to me, Moses says, they are right in what they have spoken. Really? They were? Maybe you can think back to a day when you threw out an answer to a question your teacher asked and were told it was in fact the correct answer. What? That was right? It was just a guess. When the people cried out in fear at Horeb, or Mount Sinai, God said, yes, they are right in what they have spoken. Sinners are right to be afraid of standing in God's glorious presence. Sinners are right to throw themselves at his mercy. Sinners are right to ask for another word from him, a word of forgiveness, a word about deliverance. A word that raises them up and shows them the way to approach him and live in his presence. But is that what the Israelites were asking for when they said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. If you go back to that day at Horeb in the book of Exodus, it was a day of thunder and lightning, trumpets blasting, a mountain smoking, and sinners trembling. The people said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. Once again, they were right. They were right to ask for a mediator, a spokesman for God, and God answered their prayer in a way more wonderful than they could ever have imagined. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. God fulfilled Moses' prophecy in every prophet of the Old Testament. He raised them up from among the people to speak God's truth. They didn't always get the right response, not from everybody. They were ignored and despised and rejected. They suffered even unto death. But their ministry always produced the right response from some. The prophet's faithfulness to the word of God kept the faith among the people, and kept them looking forward to the prophet of prophets. We know this because of John the Baptist, the last of the Old Testament prophets. People heard him preach and asked if he was the prophet with a capital P. He said, no, I'm not that prophet. 
but I'll show you the one you're looking for, and to him you shall listen. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Jesus Christ is the true prophet, the complete fulfillment of Moses' prophecy. The Lord our God raised him up for us from among his brothers, his own son, in our own flesh. God raised him up on the cross to purify us from sin. God raised him up from the grave on the third day and raised him up to his right hand in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord God raised him up to make things right between us. This word that describes how the man spoke when Jesus loosened his tongue is the same word for how the people spoke to Moses at Horeb. They spoke rightly. And you see the Greek word for this every time you drive around town and see the word ortho. The orthodontist makes your teeth right. The orthopedic surgeon makes your bones right. Jesus, the true prophet, makes you right with God. The Father raised him from the dead because he made things right on the cross by his blood and righteousness. And through the word, God declares, the prophet is my beloved son. To him you shall listen, for he speaks those most blessed words to you, that your sins are forgiven and the work of your salvation is finished. The Lord God raised up his son, to go on serving his people as their prophet, proclaiming, through prophets he is appointed from among us, the word that declares us righteous. By the authority of his word, we are raised up from death. The unclean spirits and the faith destroyers, with all their abominable practices, are driven out. Our eyes and ears are opened in astonishment. Yes, there is a way to the Father, a way to God's holy mountain. The way is Jesus Christ. By the greatest miracle of all, that God would be born like us and live among us as our brother, we are given the greatest miracle of all. We who are sinners can come into the presence of God and live with him forever. That's what we see that day when the deaf and mute man was brought to Jesus. The miracle was already there, being allowed to approach Jesus in the first place, much less beg him to lay his hand on their friend. It wasn't at all like that on that day at Horeb, and it was Jesus who made all the difference. The word of Christ is the proof of his presence among us, and this loosens our tongue that we may speak of God rightly, confessing our sins and confessing our faith in his forgiveness, singing his praises, praying to him, calling on him in trouble and need, and declaring his wonders to our loved ones and neighbors. The Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the people of Israel, You have seen for yourselves that I have talked with you from heaven. You have come to the right place to hear that word from heaven for yourself. That word is harsh when it needs to be, but also gentle. And when it is spoken rightly, it fills our hearts with peace. To the risen Savior, to the true prophet, and to his precious words, we will return again and again. Jesus alone has done all things well, and through him all things will be well for us. For he told us so. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.